What is up, heroes? It's Simonite Zero, and welcome to Let's Play Pokemon, the training card game for the Game Boy Color. This is a game that I played a lot as a child, but really didn't get super far, really didn't understand how to play very well. I still don't really understand the training card game, but the other day I was feeling like playing some retro games, playing some games from my childhood, and I was like, wait a minute. I did enjoy playing the Pokemon trading card game quite a bit as a kid. Let's give it another go. Ended up playing for like four or five hours, really enjoyed it, and figured, you know what? Why not play it together? Why not play it on the channel and have some fun with it? So I do want to say this is not going to be a super intense uh, let's play. This isn't very trading card game intensive. You don't need to know all the rules. You don't need to understand in the slightest. Um, I'm going to go over the basics, and I really only know the basics. This is about having fun with some Pokemon cards, you know, really keeping those nostalgia goggles on and giving some love to one of the more forgotten Pokemon games. So with that said, let's hop into it. Let's, uh, let's have some fun with this game. Now we got some... Oh. Before we get into this, I do want to say, the music, <clears throat> the soundtrack in this game is incredible. So definitely pay attention to that as we play through. But regardless, we got a new game. Um, in my like four or five hours playing through this game, I probably got a couple medals, which is going to make more sense when we get further into the game. But I really don't know too much about this game outside of, you know, you get to collect cards, you get to duel with people, and that's what I did as a kid. I collected the cards, and I loved collecting the cards, and in this game too, that's exactly what I did. I walked around, I dueled people, but I didn't really understand the bigger picture, the bigger plot, so I guess if it matters to you, this is like 80% or 90% blind, I guess. Anyways, Nick is crazy about Pokemon and Pokemon card collecting. One day, Nick heard a rumor. The legendary Pokemon cards, the extremely rare and powerful cards held by Pokemon trading card game's greatest players. The Grandmasters are searching for one to inherit the legend. And I was talking with Lizzie about this. I was super excited telling her about this game. And she was like, oh my goodness. That plot sounds so, so much like something a kid, like a five or six year old kid who would be so into Pokemon. It's just right up their alley. Dreaming of inheriting the legendary Pokemon cards, Nick visits the Pokemon card researcher, Dr. Mason. So here's our colorful overworld map. It's really small. I mean, it is Game Boy Color game. And here we are, the Pokemon Lab. Oh, why the rush, Nick? What? You want to learn how to play the Pokemon trading card game? Yes, we do, Dr. Mason. So you, too, finally want to start playing the card game. Well, dueling is more fun than just collecting cards. First, you should try playing with a practice deck. Ooh, a little bit, a little bit of shade there. I, all I did was collect the cards. I had a blast doing so. I uh, loved looking at all the art on the cards, the shiny ones, trading with friends. Absolutely my favorite. All right, here, I'll give you this deck, and now you need an opponent. Ooh, who are we gonna duel first? Hey, Sam, play with him for a while. Oh, we got our friend Sam over here. Yo, guys, what is up? My name is Samuel. <laughs> for those of you that get that, you'll appreciate that. Yes, Dr. Mason. Um, hello, Nick. Okay, let's give it a try. Alright, so we're gonna go battle Sam. How fitting, I actually battled Sam in the NCPL this week. Hey, Nick, hurry and come over here. Oh, by the way, for those of you wondering, I'm a pretty big Pokemon fan. I'm really into the competitive side of the video games, but I've never really dabbled with the uh, trading card games, so this is pretty new to me. I'll go through the basics real quick, but first, ask Sam the basics of the game. Okay, Nick, what do you want to ask about? So we're going to go through all these real quick. They don't really take long at all. Just to kind of explain things. Energy. In order to do anything, Pokemon must have energy cards. If no energy cards are attached, the Pokemon will not be able to attack or retreat. There are seven types of energy cards, which is different from the actual game. Grass, Fire, Water, Lightning, Psychic, Fighting, and Colorless. The type of energy required depends on the Pokemon. The typing chart, or like the type, strength, weakness chart and everything, somewhat more or less uh, correlates with this, or corresponds to this. Be sure to learn which Pokemon require which type of energy. Attacking. Pokemon damage defending Pokemon by attacking. Pokemon need energy cards in order to attack. For example, the energy required for Seeking's Waterfall is Water and a Colorless. That stands for one Water Energy card and another Energy card of any type. The energy card, the energy required differs according to the attack. Alright, so then retreating. To switch your active Pokemon with a bench Pokemon, choose the retreat command. If the active Pokemon is in danger, move it back to your bench. Energy is required in order to retreat. The number of energy cards required varies depending on the Pokemon. And again, you're going to see all this in practice, so if this doesn't seem immediately, if this isn't immediately clicking with your brain, not, not a big deal. There are three types of Pokemon cards, Basic, Stage 1, and Stage 2. Squirtle's Basic, War Turtle Stage 1, and Blastoise Stage 2. Basic Pokemon are the only cards that can be put directly into play. A basic Pokemon in play can be evolved to a Stage 1 Pokemon. Stage 1 Pokemon in the play area can then be evolved to a Stage 2 Pokemon. Therefore, Squirtle is needed in order to play Wartortle, etc, etc. Not uh, too, not too crazy of a concept. Using Pokemon Power. 
This is something I'm still a little shaky on. Some Pokemon have special abilities called Pokemon Powers. Some Pokemon Powers are used as soon as the Pokemon is played, while others must be used by choosing the Pokemon Power command. There are many different Pokemon Powers, so read each card's text carefully. And then ending your turn, and then we're almost done. <clears throat> your turn ends after you attack. If you do not have enough energy to attack, or if your active Pokemon cannot move due to paralysis or sleep, you can end your turn by choosing the Done command. This will cause your turn to end and your opponent's turn to begin. You should choose Done if you are unable to do anything. Alright, and then lastly, Win or Loss. Generally, the win or loss of a duel is decided by prizes. Prizes are cards that you may draw when you knock out one of your opponent's Pokemon. You win if you knock out as many of your opponent's Pokemon as there are prizes to be drawn. The number of prize cards is determined at the beginning of the match. You will lose the duel if you have no cards in your deck at the start of your turn, or if there are no Pokemon in your play area. So be careful! Alright, and that's all there is to it. Again, if you guys have any questions, it's not super complex, and I'll be explaining moves and such as we move on, and I'm going to be learning with you guys, so... And again, it shouldn't be super intense uh, to beat this game, so we're going to be having fun with the Pokemon. We're going to be, you know, including some of our more favorite Pokemon, while, well, of course, you know, sprinkling some strategy here and there. Is that all? Yes, that is all. They say that actions speak louder than words, so let's play a game. Would you like to play a game? Since this is your first time, just try to learn the basic steps. I'll be coaching you, so follow my advice. If you don't do as I say, we won't be able to proceed. <laughs> Basically, this is the in the video games when you have the old man show you how to catch the Weedle. It might be easier if you read the Pokemon Training Card Game Instruction Book while we play. Alright then, let's start your practice game. So text Sam, Sam's practice deck. This is music. Listen to it. It's so good! It's so good! When I was playing this for the first time, I was in the same room studying with Lizzie, and she saw me, and I just started, like, bobbing my head back and forth. I just couldn't help it. It's so, it's so good. Okay, but regardless, um, this is gonna be... After this, I'm gonna speed up the text, by the way. The text is probably one of the slowest parts of this game, so, yeah. But regardless, in the beginning, we have a Pokémon we put into play, and then we need other basic Pokémon that we can put into the bench. Um, so in this case we have Staryu that we can place on the bench. So that's exactly what we'll do, and you'll notice a lot of the pictures look very similar to the actual card, cards that correspond. If you remember, if you're old enough to have had those Pokemon cards. <laughs> when you have no Pokemon to put on your bench, press the B button to finish. Okay. So placing the prizes, please place two prizes, that means this is going to be a relatively short game. This means you need to knock out two of your opponent's Pokemon to win. Then there's the, the coin toss. There's a lot of RNG in this game. Like, a lot of RNG. So we're going to go first. Every turn we draw a card. And in this case, we drew a water energy. So use the attack command. You need to attach energy cards to your Pokemon. Choose cards from the menu and select a water energy card. Next, choose your active Pokemon, Goldeen. Okay, so basically, we're just assigning a water energy. This is um, something that's not always like a one-time use. If it is, or if you lose energy card, it'll say so on the attack itself. Again, I don't really know all of the cards. And I don't really know all of, um, I don't know, all of the stipulations associated with certain attacks and which cards are best and everything, but we'll find them out. I know some of them, and we'll, we'll learn as we go. Alright, so this Machop used Low Kick. It's doing some big damage to this Goldie, and it's a clean to a KO. But I believe we have a potion. I mean, this battle is 100% scripted, so, you know. Your Goldie's gonna get knocked out. <clears throat> Let's evolve it. Choose Seeking from your hand and attach it to Golding to evolve it. Its HP will increase. Definitely useful. You need to attach a Psychic Energy card to Seeking. Use any card. Now you can use Waterfall. Okay. Alright. Man, I wish they gave me the option to increase the uh, tech speed beforehand. But regardless, we'll attach the Psychic Energy and then... Oh wait, wait a minute. We still need to evolve it. Alright, now we can use Waterfall, and now we're the ones going to be doing some big damage. Now, for those of you watching, I do want to know what you guys thought about Pokemon Cards, Pokemon Card Game. What's your experience? Did you guys play this game very often? Did you actually, like, I mean, did you play the Game Boy Color game, of course? But did you play the Training Card Game? Do you still play the Training Card Game? If you did collect cards, did you just collect them for the art? And if so, what are some of your favorite cards? I remember I had one of the original, like, basic Blastoises, and I was, like, one of the most popular kids in the neighborhood for it. But to this day, one of my favorite cards is a Ho-Oh I got, like, a, 
holographic Ho-Oh that I got from my- oh, what was it called again? The- the pack of the card had the three legendary beasts on it, but anyways, attach a water energy card to your bench to star you, and yeah, we're gonna knock it out. No need to overkill, so I guess we'll use Horn Attack. And then we'll get a prize card for defeating the opponent's Pokemon. I should mention the prize cards are cards from your deck. So it's not like it's something that you can win or, you know, one of your opponent's attacks or anything, or one of your opponent's cards that you're taking from them. These are two cards set aside from your deck at the very beginning of the game that you are rewarded as you play through. So. Alright, so now Sam is placing a level 9 Rattata. Sam, it's not, it does not looking so clean against my Seeking. Oh, we got Eradicate now. Looks like it's still getting to a KO'd though. It can use Bite. Ooh, that's gonna that's gonna KO us next turn though. But I believe we have a potion. Can we use our potion, please? All right. So when all your Pokemon are knocked out and there are no Pokemon on your bench, you lose the game. Put Drowsy, the basic Pokemon you just drew, on your bench. Attach a Water Energy card to Drowsy to get it ready to attack. Choose your active seeking and attack your opponent with Waterfall. Can I not use my potion? Or no, I just got a full heal. Okay. Um, all right, then we'll place Drowsy on the bench, give him a Water Energy, and see what we can do. So we'll do a clean 30 damage, and then our Star you should be good to go. Hopefully you can take on at least two bites, question mark. I know because I've used Radicate quite a bit in my like previous playthrough, or playthrough really, it was just four or five hours. Um, it can act, act, or it has access to Super Fang, which is pretty cool in this game. Again, I love the Game Boy Colors, like, 8-bit sound, and I love the graphics for it, too. And I really like the protagonist in this game. I don't know exactly, I think the name is Mark, technically, but I don't really know... I don't really know where Mark fits in, like, a storyline or anything like that. I hope they made, like, a manga about him or something like that. And I know that I believe in the second game, which only came out in Japan, you can choose to be a girl as well. Okay, so we got a potion, which is nice. Oh. Did we evolve? Did we even evolve? I don't know if we even drew... Do we have a Starmie card on us? Choose Star, you and attack your opponent with Slap. Okay, um... We just slap? Let us practice. So please follow my guidance. Do it again. Oh my goodness. Okay, so we're going to attach another water energy. Sorry, I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. I'm just having fun chatting with you guys. These sorts of tutorials can kind of get on my nerves at times. But it is kind of necessary at times, and I hope you guys are at least learning from it too. We're getting used to the basics of this game. And again, these battles, by the way, there will be a few of them per club, which is kind of like the gym equivalent in this game. And then, of course, there are like the gym leaders or the club masters. And so there'll be, you know, a few battles per episode. At least that's the plan. And they won't take this long. We won't have someone telling us step by step what to do in between each turn. We'll be able to speed up the text and all that. So, okay. So yeah, don't think it'll be this slow. You'll get a chance to see some cool decks, you'll get to see some cool Pokemon cards, you'll get to see some cool characters, everything. Some interesting music, because it changes with each gym or club. Choose the potion card, water energy, and slap. Okay, so we're gonna use our potion. Gotta heal up. Don't wanna get KO'd by this low kick. And I believe we attach a water energy yet again. And then we attack with slap. Oh, I didn't even notice. Did he use the potion? He probably did. Sam, you sly dog. Whenever I think of Sam in a Pokemon context, I can't not think of Pokemon Forever. That was one of my favorites of the Pokemon movies, at least. Actually, there's a Pokemon movie that <clears throat> centers around Raikou, which is my favorite Pokemon, and I haven't seen it yet. I believe it was only released in Japan or something like that. I should give that a go. Give that a watch sometime. Okay, now we've got all this water energy, so we can finally... I don't think I need to do that. Yeah, we're just going to use Star Freeze, and we're going to attack. Again, another flip of the coin. We got a head, so we are going to paralyze it, which is pretty cool. Always good. Paralysis works a little bit differently in this game. It means that the next turn, the Pokemon will not be able to move, but after that turn, it will be cured of its paralysis. 
So, for example, the Machop, the Machop can't really do anything at all this turn. But, now that that turn is over, it's cured of Paralysis. That said, Paralysis is kind of OP in this game. Now Machop has only 10 HP left, let's finish the battle! Attack with Starmie Starfreeze! Starfreeze is such a cool sounding name. It sounds very, like, it, very, it sounds very anime. I can see a Dragon Ball Z character using it. Anyways, Starfreeze! Doesn't matter if we paralyze or not, but luck is on our side. Or rather, luck is on this tutorial side, as it is all scripted in this case. Okay, so we draw the last prize card, and that means... We won the duel with Sam! Alright, basically, this is how the Pokemon trading card game is played. It's a game in which you try to knock out as many of your opponent's Pokemon as there are prizes. That's the gist of it. If you don't understand something, talk to Sam. It might be helpful to practice again, too. This time was just practice, so I had you follow everything I said. But there are other styles of play, so try them out by choosing Normal Duel. Now then, let's build your deck. Did you bring your cards? We hand over our cards to Dr. Mesa. We've been collecting them, like, crazy. Every opportunity we get, we ask our mom for a pack of Pokemon cards and open them ravenously. Hmm, let me add some of my own cards to yours. Now, Nick, what kind of deck do you want? What kind of deck do I want? Please select a deck. Charmander and friends, Squirtle and friends, Bulbasaur and friends. Now, I do want to say, every single time I've done something Pokemon related on my channel, it's been Bulbasaur. We played through Pokemon Leaf Green a while ago, and Bulbasaur was voted as the starter. I played Pokemon Green while streaming, and Bulbasaur was voted as the starter. Now, my personal favorite is Charmander. I feel like Squirtle is oftentimes the in-between, but... Honestly, I'm feeling Charmander. I would normally leave this to you guys to decide, and I want you guys to know what you would choose. But at the moment, I don't know if I'm going to be able to hold back. I don't know if I'm going to be able to wait until I record the next episode to hear your guys' response, so let's go with Charmander. I, I kind of want to see what's going on with Charmander. Oh, yeah, Charmander's too. I can't resist Charmander. Okay, a Charmander and Friends deck. Here are the remaining cards. Cool. We got our deck. We received 30 cards. Why, thank you, Dr. Mason. You should duel with many different people. Why don't you go to one of the card clubs? There are many people playing at the clubs. Collect new cards and try building a new deck. Alright, so... The first thing we're going to do is, like I said, we're going to want to go into the configurations here, and we are going to speed up this message speed. I'm going to change it to 4, just because I don't want it to, like, blink so fast. But let's chat with people, see what's going on in the lab. Save your game, press start, and choose diary. Which is pretty cool that you can uh, do something with the diary. And then we can read an email from this PC. So, the first mail. It's me, Dr. Mason. Are you getting the hang of the Pokemon trading card game? I have some information for you about booster packs. If you want to collect the same cards, duel the same person many times to get a particular booster pack. By doing so, you'll be able to collect the same cards, marking, or making it easier for you to build your deck. Another method for... Like, I love this. I love this, you guys. Another method for collecting cards is to use Card Pop. When you and a friend use Card Pop, you will each receive a new card. Once you pop with a certain friend, you won't be able to pop with that friend again. So find many friends who won the Pokemon trading card for Game Boy, and Card Pop with them to get new cards. That's so funny, it's like, such a, oh yeah, link up with all your friends and like, have them play the Pokemon trading card game too. It's like so in your face, but I'm sure to every kid it sounded like the coolest thing. But regardless, we got our first Pokemon trading card game pack. Coliseum, let's see what we got. Ooh, we got a Gyarados. Oh man, I remember loving this card scheme, or this card's color scheme in particular, because I love blue and yellow. Charmeleon, Nidorino, Diglett, Meowth, Pikachu, back before Pikachu lost some weight. Uh, Tangela, ooh, I like that Tangela card too. Some grass energy. I'll be sending you useful information by email. I'll also attach a booster pack for you, so check your mail often. Ooh, that's gonna, oh, that winky face. Did you guys see that winky face? <laughs> that's so funny. Okay, so we got Sam over there. I'm sure you already know, but there are eight clubs. The Fighting, Water, Lightning, Grass, Psychic, Fire, Rock, and Science Clubs. Ooh, the Science Club. I like the Science Club. The different clubs use cards that are specific to that club. Makes sense. Are you also hoping to inherit the Legendary Pokemon cards? If you want Legendary cards, you must defeat the Grandmasters. To duel the Grandmasters, you must first get the Master Medals. The eight Masters of the Card Clubs each have a Master Medal. Go to Pokemon Dome if you want to learn more about the Legendary cards. Ooh, I want to collect all these Legendary cards. I want to be the very best. Like no one ever was. When you defeat a club member, you'll receive a booster pack. Each of them has 10 cards, and they differ depending on the booster pack. And, yeah. 
That's fair enough. Let's talk with this guy. A club master is each own a master medal. The secret of each club's deck is encrypted in its master medal. Once you get a master medal, go to the computer room and back. You can place the medals in the auto deck machines to create different decks. That's pretty neat. So here we are in back. These are the machines that will auto create decks. I don't know them too well, and we're not going to spend too much time talking about them, but isn't the auto deck machine great? As long as you have the necessary cards, this machine will automatically build a deck for you. Okay, what do you have to say? You need a metal to activate a deactivated auto deck machine. The master metal is owned by the club masters. Place the metals here after you win them. Then you'll be able to build new decks. This machine is the deck save machine. So they're really into helping you create your own decks, or if you're, that's not your thing, having people build decks for you, you can save them. It's pretty cool. But we're probably just going to be modifying the same deck. And now this guy, this is going to be our first like real, real battle. Oh, won't you duel me to test your deck? If you win, I'll give you a booster pack but it only contains energy cards. Now what's funny is when I was a kid, I hated getting energy cards. I thought they were so useless, they didn't look cool, I didn't play the game, so I thought they were a waste of my time, threw them out, whatever, gave them away. But now, energy cards are really helpful in the game itself, so this is gonna be really important. Um, I might play him a time or two off screen as well, just to get plenty of energy cards so that that's never a problem with building our decks. Would you like to duel Aaron? Yes. Ho oh, ho, please choose the deck you wish to duel against. Now, because this is our first duel, we're probably going to choose the Grass and Psychic deck. <laughs> because we have Charmander and friends, so we have what's actually a Fire and Lightning type deck. But here's Eren, our first battle. Notice how much faster things go without the tutorial and with the fast text. Alright, let's see, what do we want to start with? Pikachu, Growlithe... I like Pikachu because we have a Lightning Energy. And then we'll throw Gro Growlithe on the bench. And that's all we can do for the time being. It's a four prize match. You'll find that three or four prizes is pretty much the average. And then the club masters will be six. But hopefully we get heads. No, we don't. And you know what I don't like about this? Is that going second is such a clear disadvantage. Like very much a disadvantage. And, you know, at least in some games it's like not too big of a deal. But you always end up taking hits more quickly. Oh, and he's got pincer. Pincer is good. At least from my understanding. Leak Slap, flip a coin of tails, this attack does nothing. Either way, you can't use this tech again as long as Farfetch stays in play. Oh, this is such an interesting card. Leak Slap, it does 30 damage, but then Farfetch becomes useless. Oh, and it's tails! So now this Farfetch is just a, a sitting duck. Yep, yep, I just said that. Anyways, we got a fighting energy. We're going to attach a lightning energy to our Pikachu. And that way we can attack with Gnaw. Oh, I should mention weakness. It's not about the attacks themselves like it is in the Pokemon video game. So if you use like Thunderbolts, it's actually about the typing of the card itself. So you'll notice that Farfetch'd is a normal type card, whereas I'm an electric type card. And normal kind of encompasses flying as well. So yeah, it's kind of interesting, but you know, it is what it is. Either way, um, we're going to attach a Fighting Energy to our Pikachu so we can use Thunderbolt, but at the moment we don't actually need to because what I can do is actually just use Gnaw, and because of the type effectiveness, Plus Power is going to add 10 damage to that, we'll actually knock this out, which is pretty cool, and we'll get another Lightning Energy. But there is the Execute, and it is a Grass-type um, thing. The Defending Pokemon is now asleep. No! Oh, We've been put to sleep, my friends. Sleep check, do we wake up? No, we don't, we're, so we're still asleep. We still get a turn though. So we can still play stuff on the bench, we can attach energies. Now, I, I don't actually remember exactly what Growlithe does. Flare, so it needs fire and something else. And that's about it, so. Okay, so what we can actually do this turn is we'll attach a fighting energy to Growlithe because that'll be the star thing. And then because we're asleep, we can't really do anything else. Do we wake up? Yes, we do. That said, Execute will probably just end up going for Hypnosis yet again. Unless it gets... Oh. It's about Leech Seed. Leech Seed? That's gonna do some damage and it's gonna heal it up. We just got seeded, that's not good. We might want to start doing some damage relatively soon. Oh, we got Magmar. Let's check Magmar. Fire Punch. Doing some pretty big damage for only two fires? The question is... Do we want to give our fire energy to that or Growlithe? I'm gonna give it to Growlithe because we don't have another fire energy just yet. We have a potion. I'm probably gonna give that to Pikachu right now. 
And then I'm going to attack with Thunder Jolt just to potentially 2 a KO this after Leech Seed damage too. Thunder Jolt, this is if we get Tails, which we do. We also do 10 damage to ourselves, which is really annoying, but we'll still live a Leech Seed anyways. So it's not the end of the world. Do, 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 do. But yeah, anyways, these Pokemon cards, by the way, now are so expensive. These like original like jungle booster packs. I think I looked into it like one time and yeah, they are they are really up there and cost a lot of money. I still save some of my original Pokemon cards. I'm pretty happy about that. I'm definitely the type of person that just saves all the things. And like I said before, because of the, um, oh yes, we don't hurt ourselves this time. Because of the Thunder Jolt damage, even with the Leaf Seabull to a KO, which is really cool. So now we got it. We got another Pikachu. Okay, and there's the Pinsir. Ooh, there's that scary Pinsir. Is it normal or is it? No, it's Grass type, so it's not going to be weakened by, uh, or particularly weak to our Thunder Jolt. And we got another Fire. Cool. I'm gonna hand that to Magmar then, just in case we get another one. I'll play Pikachu on the bench, and we can give that a Lightning another time. For the time being, though, I'm going to go for Thunder Jolt because we can two a KO this. And I don't know exactly, oh, we do damage to ourselves too. That'll probably put us in range of whatever attack Pinsir has, to be honest. But we'll see if he gets the right energy cards, if he needs them or not. Oh, it's got two grass, it can use it, yes it can. Oh man, Iron Grip, that's gonna KO us, which is unfortunate. But we can go into our Growlithe and we should be able to KO this back, especially because of our type effectiveness. So Aaron has claimed the first prize. Yeah, and we'll just go straight into our Growlithe. And we got a Diglett. Ooh, we do some trapping around here. I believe this thing uses, uh, what's it called? Fighting energy, because there isn't like a ground typing. So I think ground and rock are encompassed by fighting in this game. But that switch card, by the way, would enable me to just immediately switch the Pokemon that's in play with something on my bench without having to worry about a retreat cost. Because if you typically, if you want to take a Pokemon back, you need to sacrifice energy cards, which is, you know, less than ideal, more often than not. Oh, Abra just evolved into Kadabra. Oh no, I remember, I used to use Kadabra, um, or I used Kadabra <laughs> a few days ago when I started playing this game again. It's strong, it's got Super Psy, which I think does like 50 damage. We got Zapdos. Ooh, we're talking some strong mons. Uh, what other attacks do I have? No, just Flare. Okay, well, I think we just have to attack, pretty much. I'll play this for the sake of it, and we'll give... We'll give Pikachu an electric? Do we want to, or do we want to check the Zapdos? I kind of want to check the Zapdos and see exactly what attacks that has. It's got Thunder for three lightning... Yeah. I'm gonna give it to Pikachu, just cause that would take a lot of time to set up. You know what I mean? Alright, let's see what we can do with this Flare. We should be able to take hits from this Kadabra. Although, I think, if I recall correctly, it needs two Psychics and then just something else. Oh, but it used Energy Search. So, it didn't even matter, he's got the Psychic Energy on the Kadabra. It's gonna be doing some big damage, Super Psy. Yeah, 50. So we're definitely getting to a KO'd by that. Actually, anything on our team is going to be pretty hard-pressed to try and live that. But what we can do is, I believe we can put it in range of Pikachu's, what's it called, Thunder Jolt, next. Yeah, so we'll attack here, and then we'll probably just sacrifice our Diglett next. As, or no, he's going to KO us here, and then we'll go into our Pikachu, and we should be fine. Super Psy doing big damage. Yeah, I remember Kadabra. Pretty, pretty strong mon. Okay, next up, we'll throw in Pikachu. Got another full heal. Again, we'll adjust our deck. But Thunder Jolt. Nice, and we didn't even damage ourselves. And I think that might be the last prize card. Is that? Yes, it is. And we got our Charmander. Oh, I love, I love this Charmander's card art, or this art, the artwork for this Charmander card. It's so cute, but there we go. We've defeated Eren, and we have obtained a new pack with plenty of energies, which will be super helpful. Oh, you win. Here you go, as promised. All right, so all the energies, and we got a lot of Grass Psychic, Lightning. Okay, so this will be helpful for when we want to modify our deck eventually. Did you, feel, did you get a feel for your deck? 
Come again, I'll be glad to duel with you anytime. Okay, so now, now that we've done that, um, we can actually venture off into the world and we can start going towards the clubs and trying to become the best, trying to collect all the legendary cards, but of course, we are going to do that in the next episode. Let me know if you guys are enjoying the series so far, let me know what you guys think about the trading card game, let me know what you guys think of the music, the aesthetic, whether or not you guys, you know, if this triggers you all the nostalgia, whether or not you guys trigger the Pokemon cards, um, or collected the Pokemon cards when you were a kid. And yeah, I hope you guys are looking forward to the rest of this game just as much as I am. But anyways, until the next episode, this has been the Night Zero, and this mission is complete.